meandering my way up to Colorado. Now the magic of the road brought me to a huge wall of petroglyphs. That's right, I'm staying on a freaking alpaca farm. <laughs> to get our vaccinations. Woo! <laughs> Light at the end of the tunnel here. Put in the work, put in the hard work, and then you'll get paid off. <laughs> decor, decor, decor! <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Firefly and I. I'm Anna in my van Firefly with my kitten Inara and dog Sterling. And if you were with me last week, you know that I just left the Grand Canyon area, Lee's Ferry, and I'm right now heading, kind of meandering my way up to Colorado. Uh, not quite sure where I'm gonna end up tonight, but I did wanna show y'all this beautiful sunset. It's just really gorgeous. Lots of big kind of rocks rising up and um, just beautiful colors everywhere. Uh, really nice drive here tonight. So since it is getting late, I am just going to pull over um, at a sort of rest stop shell station in Cayenta. Um, so tr trick for solo travelers, especially solo female travelers with a dog. Um, if I'm pulling in kind of later to a spot and I don't want people to know that I'm alone, um, I pull over beforehand, like five, 10 minutes beforehand, let Sterling pee, um, like his last little pee for the night. And then I pull in and get comfortable and just sort of slide in the back. And then I never have to get out of the van, never have to show that like I'm alone, just me and my little pipsqueak dog. <laughs> Well, there's no cell phone service at this Shell station, and all I want to do tonight is just park and binge some Netflix. I am tired and just want to lay in bed and watch TV. <laughs> it's something I rarely do while living in the van, but I've got that craving. So I'm going to continue on to Cayenta, like proper. I'm outside of it right now, and um, there seems to be a spot behind a Burger King that people on iOverlander say is doable so we'll give that a go all right i made it to the burger king i am going to just put my window coverings up crawl right in the back and that way nobody who's looking which i doubt anybody would be anyway um knows that i'm just here alone it is crazy windy outside i don't know if you all can hear but the whole van is like shaking back and forth it's like kind of a trip when that happens always what's that sound huh Pretty crazy, huh, baby? All right, well, I have a couple shows downloaded on my iPad, so I'm gonna snuggle in, watch those, and try not to get too motion sick by the movement of this van right now. <laughs> um, but I will see you in the morning. Have a great night. Good morning, everybody. So after a very windy night in the van, we are back on the road. Um, so starting out in Cayenta today, but we should have a super, super fun day ahead. So excited to have you with me. So Monument Valley is still closed because basically all tribal lands are still closed because of COVID. Um, however, the drive along with all the big monoliths of rock and everything is still a very spectacular drive.
So I was getting hungry, so I just decided to pull over on this random road and found this awesome lunch spot. Uh, super kind of tucked away and cliffs around and super neat little road magic find. You just never know what the road's gonna bring you when you just decide to turn off randomly. Sometimes it ends up being quite a little blessing. Now the magic of the road brought me to a huge wall of petroglyphs. Uh, right after lunch, just right down the road, I found this ginormous area of petroglyphs. There's hundreds of them uh, between 300 and 3,000 years old. So pretty, ab like absolutely mind-blowingly incredible to see this many, just a, a really wonderful glimpse into the past of the, you know, rightful owners of this land. I'm in Cortez, Colorado, and I'm gonna to go to one of my absolute favorite restaurants. I love this place. You would never expect it to be here because it's just like small town right on this western side of Colorado, but it's all farm to table, super yummy, tons of gluten-free options, all of that. Um, so I try to stop in here anytime I go through Cortez. So this dish is green chili stew with a burger in it with fries and cheese. Come on, all locally sourced. <laughs> All right, I am heading to camp. It's going to be a cool one tonight. That's right, I'm staying on a freaking alpaca farm and I am so excited about it. It's super cold tonight and windy, so we are gonna wait to do the tour in the morning, but I am camping right next to them and get to just look at their little faces while they eat and stuff. They're just so goofy and cute and I just can't get enough of them. So I am going to hunker in for the night and uh, get the van all nice and warm and cozy, but I will see you in the morning when we get to do a tour of the farm. We own about 45 of these guys. Um, we also board for four ranches, so we have 52 more that we're boarding for. So we have, what, 96 on a property or something like that. Um, we own the Makaya alpacas, we also call them the fuzzy butts. And we board a bunch of the surreys, which we call little mock dumps. So come on through, this is our fun tent. And that's one of our three guard dogs, Charlotte. Charlotte and our other guard dogs are called Maremmas, or Italian livestock guard dogs. And they basically keep our animals safe from coyotes or stray dogs or what have you. 
This is a stormtrooper. And stormtrooper is 10 months old. In fact, he was 10 months old today. Hi. <laughs> Look at that face. So he is what we call a silver gray. And this is what his fleece looks like down inside. It's totally different when you get down inside. Oh, wow. In fact, if I get him out of this, in the sunshine, you can see it. So they have what's called crimp, which is just like a sheep's wool we have, but there's no lanolin on it. Uh. So it makes it a very, very nice, exquisite, exquisite fleece. Wow, it's so soft. Uh huh. It's extremely soft. It's a hypoallergenic fleece. To my baby. <laughs> and this is Max. Max is the color we call the true black. And he is our oldest. He was 10 months old on the second. You're a talker. You're a talker. You're a talker. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so we share the, this year we're sharing the 4th and the 5th of May. Um, so everybody here will be sheared down. Their fleece will be about, you know, a quarter of an inch in length. So when they get, when you get done with sharing, they all look a little funny. We like to get that very first fleece off until she's really shaggy and matted down. Ariana is, and so is Mr. Weston right here. Um, we like to get the shearing, first shearing off of them because of the, uh, it just makes for a nicer fleece. But if they arrive too late in the year, I won't shear them. I want them to have a full fleece for winter. There is the second breed of alpaca. And this guy over here is named Marley. He's one of our boy boys. And in fact, if we go to the gate, he'll probably come over and get petted. So you can see the difference in their fleece. The silver grays are so pretty. They're very pretty. There's silver gray and there's the rose gray. Silver gray is a black base, rose gray is a brown base color. Llamas, alpacas, and camels are all in the same family. Um, llamas, we used to have a couple here. Llamas are much, much larger. So altitude here is our oldest alpaca. He's 13 years old. Um, and we call him Mr. Stuffy Bear because you don't have that much of a personality. <laughs> <laughs>
So one of the main reasons that we are in BV this week is to get our vaccinations. Um, <laughs> JP County did a great job at the vaccine rollout and they are allowing you to sign up for the kind of vaccine you want. And since I'm always traveling, it's just too hard to have to go three weeks later. So we signed up for the Johnson & Johnson. We are on our way right now to go get it. A little nervous, really don't want to get sick afterwards, <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully all goes well and we will be vaccinated. Very excited. Here we go. <laughs> it's amazing how efficient this is. I mean, there's like no one here. It's just a quick drive in, sign the thing, hop over there, boom, done. And this is what's going to get me my passport? That, yeah, I guess. I guess, I mean, whoever's <laughs> going to ask for it, I don't know. I all guess right. the airlines are going to start asking for it, right? That somebody mentioned, I'm not sure. <laughs> cool. Uh, so and that's it? it the, right up there, the folks will give you your uh, shots and uh, then a few minutes of waiting in the next slot and you'll be ready to roll. Sweet. I Thank appreciate you your help. All. Thank you. We are ready. ready to get shot. Okay, who's getting shot? Yeah, who's getting shot first, babe? Uh, you go. You want me to go first? Yeah. All right, let's do this. <laughs> okay, here's the needle. Ready? One, two, three. And then here comes the medication. Tight. We'll sting a little bit. Don't do that. <laughs> Sorry. Don't scare grandma on me. <laughs> All right, you're done. Just a pinprick. It actually feels a little uh, achy. You know, like the ache that you get from uh, those kind of vaccinations. But so far, so good. Oh, cool. Now it's your own game. Now, on the elephant, is that, is that an animal that means something to you? Is that your spirit animal? Uh, it is, yeah. And I had a really powerful. Up all their trunks and putting out on the skeleton of the elephant. Oh. Vaccinated! No more Light at the end of the tunnel here. So it is the morning after the vaccine. I woke up feeling pretty rough, um, chills, fever, body aches, um, all pretty expected things coming from the vaccine. Uh, definitely hurting a little bit today. We set up a little floor bed to just chill and watch Netflix and didn't plan anything to do today other than just kind of let this pass and let our bodies work the way that they're supposed to with this vaccine. So, um, we did hear some of the side effect things of the Johnson and Johnson. We're not too concerned because, you know, seven out of seven million isn't that much. We're kind of just glad we got our Johnson and Johnson in. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of taking turns napping and hanging out on the floor bed and chilling lucky and feeling, you know, very, very blessed to have a place to come and heal, um, like a nice house to just be in for a little bit. So I'm going to turn the camera off for the rest of the day and just heal and, um, let my body work how it's supposed to. And then we will go out and do some fan build renovations after that. So after a couple days of rest, I'm feeling much, much better um, and ready to tackle some van projects. The unfortunate thing is that before I got vaccinated, I got a tiny bit done. Like I cleaned out the van, got everything out and, you know, got rid of a few things because I was just like packed to the brim in there. Um, but I didn't get that much done. And so when we were laid up, not feeling well, of course, it was like beautiful weather outside, warm and everything. And now from now till the end of the week, it's supposed to be cold and <laughs> snowy and um, just not so nice outside. So for your Wayfinder tip of the week, it is that, you know, sometimes uh, living an intentional life, whether it's nomadic or anything else, you get these amazing times like staying on an alpaca farm or getting these amazing views in Monument Valley. Um, but other times it's about, you know, doing what you have to, which getting vaccinated, you know, if you want to travel, it's going to be pretty necessary. Um, 
or you know, just putting your head down and working through the cold, working through the snow to get those projects done in a timely manner. Um, but if you put your head down and you just do the work and you, you know, keep putting one foot in front of the other, uh, even when things go wrong, like my um, fridge broke this week, the drawer that was on it, I had drawers flying open. I had um, like one of the doors of the uh, cabinets, you know, was coming loose. And so it's just like, I pulled into VV and was feeling kind of like this disaster area, but, um, you know, there's always a way to fix it and always a way to just keep moving. So, um, yeah, put in the work, put in the hard work, and then you'll get paid off with the amazingness that is, you know, earlier this week and especially last week with the Grand Canyon views. Project number one is gonna be fixing the things that are broken. So that includes my sliding drawer for my fridge and freezer and the cabinet with the tongue groove paneling that came off. The other part of this is that we're going to put locks on the cabinet doors because some of them do tend to fly open um, because the little magnet clasps that we got don't tend to hold down like big dirt roads and stuff. So basically we're gonna go through and just reinforce everything and try to keep it kind of looking cool too. So I got new sliders for my uh, fridge freezer drawer. They come with these super ugly blue handles. And so I got this spray paint right here that will match the rest of my cabinetry. It's kind of a bronze color. So that will just, um, you know, kind of make the aesthetics a little bit nicer in there. Your sizing certainly works to your advantage. <laughs> Ooh, it works. Ah, that nice knocking sound. Luckily I got my alpaca gloves earlier this week, Harvest House, for the win. So project number two goes a lot more with my design mindset uh, rather than the problem solving construction mindset that Luca has. And that is going to be fixing the curtain rods because my curtain rods are super bent and just out of shape and not looking very good. Um, they're the tension rods and it's just not working out. So I am going to replace those and then fill in the gaps at the top of the curtain. So here's a little trick of when you have like the right size screws but they don't match color is if you have some spray paint like I used for my slider for the fridge, um, just spray it into a little like can or canister or just whatever you can. Let it sit for a, like a minute or so so that it gets a little bit thicker. Then use a Q-tip and you can just dab those the tops of the screws and kind of make them match each other a little bit. I don't have any copper paint, but I do have bronze, so at least it adds a little metallic shine. Decor, decor, decor. <laughs> have to make Ben as pretty as possible. <laughs> uh, something that I've really wanted to do that's really important to me is create some more green feeling in the van, uh, some more kind of natural pieces and nature looking things. And so um, I'm going to uh, 
do that after a little bit of experimenting with some other options, I figured out a really fun way to fill in those blanks, but not before we had some fun <laughs> with the other options of things that ended up getting returned. Well, it's getting pretty cold out here, so I'm going to call it quits for the week. Um, I do have a couple more projects that I want to be doing along the next couple weeks because Firefly is actually one of the exhibit vehicles at VanFest this year. VanFest is a van festival located in Hurricane, Utah on May 8th, and we will be there um, so you can come see Firefly and all of her glory. Come meet me. Come meet Inara. Sterling will be with a sitter because that many people walking in and out of our house would completely freak him out. <laughs> but but um, if you want to come see us, then make sure that you look at tickets for that. I'll link it below. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, subscribe, do all those things. Um, and remember that Patreon uh, really helps me out as well. For only $4 a month, you get all filming locations, everything for this episode. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. And here is a look around Firefly 2.0. Thank you.